Let us come together for a moment of prayer. Spirit of life and community, author of all wisdom, we invite your presence with us today as we gather to celebrate the gifts, talents, and dedication of those within this university community. As we look towards the future, may we remain open to new possibilities for learning and challenge. May we find courage and friendships in the risks we undertake. May we always be filled with grace and passion in our actions and with wisdom and gentleness in our words. Holy One, bless this ending and this beginning. Amen. Madam Chancellor, Your Honours, distinguished guests, honorary degree recipients, colleagues, graduates, family and friends, good afternoon. <laughs> it's my pleasure to welcome you to Mount St. Vincent University's Fall 1999 Convocation a very special event for all of us here today. I want to take a moment to acknowledge the fact that our ceremony this afternoon is graced with some special guests. We're particularly delighted that their honors, the Honorable J. James Kinley and Mrs. Grace Kinley, Lieutenant Governor of Nova Scotia, could be with us this afternoon. Ms. Marianne McGraw, member of the Legislative Assembly for Halifax Bedford Basin, representing the Minister of Education, the Honorable Jane Purvis, and Dr. Susan Clark, the Executive Director of the Nova Scotia Council on Higher Education. We welcome you to our convocation. Today we celebrate the accomplishments of over 200 graduates, the largest group of students to graduate at our fall convocation and over 160 of those graduates are here with us this afternoon. So let's take this opportunity to give the full class of 1999 a round of applause.
Graduates, now it's your turn. I know you would want to join me in acknowledging those who've helped you realize your accomplishments, the family and friends who have been there for you during your years at the Mount, so let's you and I join in thanking them. I believe you would also want me to express appreciation to the faculty who have taught and advised you along the way. We're very fortunate at the Mount to have a very dedicated group of faculty, each distinguished in their own fields in teaching and research and scholarship, many of whom are here this afternoon. I know that from ch chatting with you yesterday and today, you've told me of the uh, particular encouragement you received from a faculty member or the particular challenge you had in someone's class, and that our faculty have worked with you to develop your potential. So again, let's show our appreciation to the faculty. While I'm saying thank yous, let me also take a moment to acknowledge those who've made this afternoon possible. It takes an awful lot of work, as you can imagine, to put on a convocation from public affairs to physical plant. Everyone in this university plays a role. But I want to recognize with appreciation the uh, particular work of our registrar, Lynn Terrio, and her staff and our convocation coordinator, Dean Rosemary Sampson, and her staff. Uh, together, we can make this happen. Today, graduates, as you receive your degrees and become part of the Mount alumni family, we also welcome two exceptional women who have distinguished themselves in their lives and careers, Anne Derrick and Dorothy Smith, who will be recognized a little later during our ceremony this afternoon. One of the things that we do at the Mount, because of our strong sense of community, is we always acknowledge those who are graduating who have a special connection to the Mount. Rhonda Wakeley Fortin, a member of the staff in my office, is graduating with her Master of Education, and her husband Bill and uh, young uh, daughter Lindsay are with us this afternoon. Jeffrey O'Connell, who is your valedictorian today, and will be graduating from the public relations program, is the son of Virginia O'Connell, who was for 16 years the supervisor of our child study center, and who was recently lured away to a very challenging new position with the province. Christina McCurdy is graduating with her degree in tourism and hospitality management, and Christina is the daughter of Gretchen McCurdy, who served two terms on our board of governors and remains on our development committee. Barbara Wilson, the sister of Donna Saunders in the registrar's office, will be receiving her BBA. And Dorothy Tennant, who is graduating with her Master of Education, is the sister of Annette Vershuren, a 1996 honorary degree recipient from the Mount. So as you can see, there are lots of connections. I also want to recognize and congratulate two of our faculty who recently retired from the Department of Education and on whom the Senate has conferred the honor of Professor Emeritus. They are Dr. Yvonne Partier, Sister of Charity, who could not be here today because Yvonne has gone to Rome to study for eight months, but I know that she is with us in spirit but with us in person is Dr. Anne Manicum. Anne, please stand. Both of these women have served this university and the broader academic community with dedication and distinction. And we are delighted to confer this honor upon you and delighted that we will continue our association with you. Congratulations. <laughs> Graduates, in your time at the Mount, you've laid a great foundation on which to build in the years ahead. Your new credentials will open many doors, for the evidence is clear that university graduates 
realize greater lifetime employment and income opportunities. But you graduate today with a lot more than your formal credential. In her installation address, our new Governor General, Her Excellency the Right Honorable Adrian Clarkson said, the essence of inclusiveness is that we are part of a society in which language, color, education, sex, and money need not, should not divide us, but can make us more aware and sensitive to difference. I believe that your education in the personalized and intellectually challenging environment of the Mount has indeed fostered that awareness and sensitivity that gives our graduates the skills and abilities to be agents of change in the ongoing global quest for social justice. As you know, Mount St. Vincent University has strong ties to the broader community through community-centered research, outreach, and service. Our involvement in events such as the Run for the Cure for Breast Cancer and the Cystic Fibrosis Shinarama are just two examples. We hope that you will continue your community linkages wherever you may settle. Our universities are a great asset to Nova Scotia. Collectively, we generate $1.2 billion of economic benefit to the province each year. It has taken an investment of time, effort, and resources on the part of many to achieve and sustain the quality of education and community involvement that we offer at Mount St. Vincent University. It is an investment that has paid rich dividends for this community and for Nova Scotians. October 26 commemorates President's Day at the Mount and is a tribute to Sister Evaristus Moran, the first president of the Mount and her successors. We can pay no greater tribute to our foremothers than building on their legacy, preserving the great asset that is Mount St. Vincent for the benefit of future generations of students and taking the university to new heights of achievement. These are exciting times for the Mount, and we are pleased that you are part of them. The Mount continues to expand its influence regionally, nationally, and internationally. We are recognized for the quality of the education we offer, the richness that co-op, internships, and practica add, and the enhanced accessibility to students near and far that come from our enlightened policies, our commitment to distributed learning, and our program innovations. As far as distributed learning goes, you may have noticed in your programs that there's a significant number of Master of Education and Master of Arts in Education graduates from places uh, cut quite a distance from Nova Scotia, including Ontario, Newfoundland, and further afield. These individuals have completed their course requirements through open learning, and we are delighted that they are able to be here today. And while all of them have made special efforts in order to take this program, I want to share just one story with you. Mary Broderick of Bayvert, Newfoundland, traveled 24,500 kilometers over 18 months to complete her Master of Education. She often made the nine-hour trek to St. John's by public transportation, car, and on some occasions by plane. Mary says she would never have been able to complete her degree without her husband Bill's support, given that he was the one who was often doing the driving. Now, you will agree with me that that's dedication. I'd also like to mention that today we have the first graduate of the certificate program in community residential services, Marsha Matthews from Doaktown, New Brunswick. And as well, for the first time, two students registered at the Mount will be receiving the Joint Master of Arts in Women's Studies from the Mount Dalhousie and St. Mary's. So a special congratulations to Lisa Walters and Natasha Bailey. 
Before closing, just a word about photographs. I promised some of you yesterday that it would be a great day for weather, and I was right, wasn't I? So you can certainly take photos outside. But if you want to take some indoor photographs, we have a special treat for you. You can visit our art gallery. There's an exhibition there with a twist. You can get up close and personal with the art. There are a number of interesting backdrops against which you can situate yourself. So if you'd like to have a graduation photograph sitting in the man in the moon or descending the grand staircase of the Titanic, feel free to go down to the art gallery. Nobody will say don't touch. Nobody will say you can't photograph that. You can do whatever you would like. Graduates, I urge you to continue to explore possibilities, to make connections, and to expand boundaries. Many of you have already demonstrated how good you are at that. As alumni, you will remain a part of this Mount community. And later in our ceremony, you will be pinned with your alumni pin by two representatives of our alumni. And I hope that you will wear that pin with pride. So please stay in touch with new developments at your alma mater via www.msvu.ca. And don't forget to write, phone, and email us with your news. As I said to several of you yesterday and today, you are our best ambassadors. And we look forward to following your careers, learning of your successes, and seeing you at reunions and alumni gatherings, I know that each of you will make a difference in your career and life's path. Congratulations again, and all the best. Madam Chancellor, <clears throat> Madam President, Your Excellency, the Lieutenant Governor, Government Representatives, University faculty, fellow graduates, honored and invited guests, good afternoon. My name is Jeff O'Connell. Almost three years ago, in September of 1996, I sat in the same auditorium with a few hundred other new students. At the time, I really had no idea what to expect from my upcoming university experience. Three years later, back in the same room, I can say without any doubt that my time at Mount St. Vincent has been the most rewarding three years of my life. That's why it is a truly humbling honor to be here today as valedictorian for the fall 1999 graduating class. I could talk with you today about what a great school the Mount is, and it is a fantastic school. I could talk about how dedicated and genuinely caring the faculty and staff are. I could speak to the benefits of the Mount's nationally recognized co-op and distance education programs. I could talk about something as simple as the school's distinguished history or its beautiful campus with its spectacular views. I could even mention how we graduates now have the opportunity to live up to the accomplishments of the graduates of the Mount who have come before us. Instead. What I'm going to talk about today is a bit unconventional. In fact, I debated whether I should even address the topic. I decided, however, that there is perhaps no better topic to discuss, because above all other things, this is what my experience at the Mount made me realize, and I think it's particularly important that we as graduates know this as we get ready for the next stage in our lives. I want to talk with you today about being true to yourself. When the alarm sounds and we get up in the morning and go, it's often hard to find even one pure second in a day. We do this, we do that, we go here, we go there, we talk, we walk, and before we know it, the day has gone by. The week has gone by. The year has gone by. Three years, a university degree. It's vital, whether we're moving out into the real world or are already living in it, 
that we find the time to slow down, that we take the time out to see who we are and what we're doing in our lives. We need to regularly ask ourselves as we go out today, are we happy? And I mean truly happy, not just content. If we're not, we should begin to change our lives. As we embark on our respective paths today, not just graduates, but everybody who leaves this auditorium, we should all try to examine our lives to see if we are truly happy. We can all ask if we're being true to ourselves. And there is a caveat here. Being true to ourselves doesn't mean looking out for number one. What I'm encouraging all of us to do today, and from every day onward, is to take the time to search inside and begin to continually challenge ourselves. Challenge ourselves to make the better decision. From these challenges, we will realize new things about ourselves. We'll do things we never knew we could do, and maybe even become a person we never knew we could be. Everyone has a different path, but along that path, we all face decisions, sometimes big ones, sometimes hundreds of little ones in a day. It's by being in touch with ourselves that we'll make the better decision and become what we can be. Jimmy Carter, the 39th President of the United States, once said, I can get up at 9 and be rested, or I can get up at 6 and be President. Literally and metaphorically, Getting up at six is a lot harder than getting up at nine. But living up to what we can become is the most difficult thing that there is. I remember seeing a movie once in which two elderly brothers were arguing. One of the brothers was close to death, and his sibling, who had been a very big part of his life, said, you know, Harry, you could have been nicer. Meaning, his dying brother could have been a nicer person. I was blown away. It struck me as such a tragedy that this dying character had had the opportunity to be a better person in the simplest way, just to be a friendlier human being, and he never took it. It seemed to me like such a waste to leave that behind as a legacy. I guess I want to tell all of us graduates that when it's all over many, many years from now, let's, the group of us, all say that we got up at six. Let's have very few could-haves and a whole lot of I'm glad eyes. What I'm saying is, let's take all the opportunities that come our way to be better people, no matter how small. We are all artists painting on blank canvases. Make every brush stroke count, and we can create a masterpiece. So in closing, the formula is simple. Let's be sure we take the time to look both inside ourselves and around us at the world every day. Let's challenge ourselves and never stop challenging ourselves. And let's create the most unshakable faith in ourselves. But let's all remain humble and kind. If we do all of these things along our journey, if we are true to our best selves, then the rewards will never, ever stop coming. To all of today's graduates, congratulations. To the university faculty who helped us get here today, thank you. To our families and friends for their support, thank you. And to all of you, Thank you. Madam Vice Chancellor and President, It is, my, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the collegiate honors of graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study, and I ask that Teresa Babcock be admitted to the Certificate in Business Administration. Teresa would like to accept this certificate in memory of her dad, Phil Daniels. Madam Vice Chancellor and, Pre and President, the Certificate in Community Residential Services on Marsha Matthews.
Madam Vice Chancellor and President, the Certificate in Gerontology on Meredith Angel. Madam, Vi Madam Chancellor, it is my privilege to present to you the candidates for the collegial uh, honors of graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study, and I ask that they be admitted to the baccalaureate degree. Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Arts on Shelley Brown. University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Sonia Brown. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Sonia. Patricia Dill. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Patricia. Maura Duncan. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Molly. Janelle Gillespie Liang. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Janelle. Vicki Ann Hughley. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Bernadette Kearney. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Bernadette. Jennifer Lammy. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations. Sarah Louise McDowell. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Sarah. Gregory Nepean. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Greg. Patrick O'Rourke. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Patrick. Jennifer Renison. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Jennifer. Angela Sangster. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Angel. Lisette Whitworth. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Congratulations, Lisette. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Arts Advanced Major on Terry Marie Roberts. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Arts Advanced Major with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Science on Susan Duffy with distinction. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Susan. Tara Foran. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Tara. Sean Keast. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations, Sean. Robin Russell. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Science Advanced Major on Stephanie Briand. 
On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science, Advanced Major, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Leslie McSween. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science, Advanced Major. Congratulations, Leslie. Madam Chancellor, Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Science Honors on Jean Evans. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science Honors with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Child and Youth Study on Estelle MacArthur. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Child and Youth Study with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Estelle. Annette Manuel. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts, Child and Youth Study. Congratulations. Tenure Power. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts, Child and Youth Study. Congratulations, Tanya. Arlene Smith. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts, Child and Youth Study. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Information Technology on Laura McNeil. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Information Technology with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Kevin Peddell, Cooperative Education Route. Kevin also receives a certificate in business today. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Information Technology. Congratulations, Kevin. Ronald Potty, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Information Technology. Linda Rose, Cooperative Education Route. I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Arts Information Technology. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration on Frank Bryant, Cooperative Education Route. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Lynn Cashin. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Lynn. Sharon Conrad, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Tanya Deschart with distinction. I confer the degree of Bachelor of, Bus of Business Administration. Congratulations, Tanya. Jennifer Hardy, Cooperative Education Option with distinction. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Deanna Heptich Paul. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Deanna. Marlena Kennedy, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Jim Long. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Jim. Aileen Lina. 
I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Elaine. Tara McCacken. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Tara. Michael Robar. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Pamela Schofield, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Angela Ray Salos. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Jill Totten with distinction. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Jill. Carol Ann Tyndall. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations, Carol. Tara Ware, Cooperative Education Option with Distinction and Highest Aggregate. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. Barbara Wilson with Distinction. Barbara also receives a certificate in marketing today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Business Administration. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Human Ecology on Barbara Ann Tobin Ryan. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Human Ecology with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations on Rhonda Creelman, Cooperative Education Option. Rhonda also receives a certificate in business today. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Chastity Dooley, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Chastity. Renee Fournier, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations. Natasha Jorgantis, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Natasha. Kari Mailman. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Kari. Mike Maloney. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Mike. Adria May, Cooperative Education Option. Adria also receives a certificate in marketing today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Adria. Tracy McMichael, Cooperative Education Option. Tracy also receives two certificates today, one in business and one in marketing. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Tracy. Jeffrey O'Connell, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, very fine speech. Jennifer Parker, Cooperative Education Option. Jennifer also receives a certificate in marketing today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Jennifer. Shannon Ryan, Cooperative Education Option. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Shannon. Tina Tebow. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Public Relations. Congratulations, Tina. Madam Chancellor, the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition on Andrea Hashi. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, 
I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Andrew. Donna Heffler. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition. Congratulations. Gina Elaine Andrews, Cooperative Education Route with distinction, Gina also receives a certificate in business today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Science Applied Human Nutrition. John Tourism. Tourism. Mm -hmm. Tourism. Sorry, I made a mistake. It's the degree Sorry. Tourism and Hospitality Management. Thank you. <laughs> you don't want that degree. It'll stay here. <laughs> On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. I wasn't watching the colors. <laughs> Jonathan Crandall, Cooperative Education Route with Distinction and Highest Aggregate. Jonathan also receives a certificate in business today. I confer on you the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Jonathan. Jason, Jason Sebastian Hache, Practica Route. Jason also receives the certificate in business today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Jason. Jeanette Angela Jodry, Cooperative Education Route. And Jeanette also receives a certificate in business today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations, Jeanette. Mary Christina McCurdy, Practica Route. Mary also receives a certificate in business today. I confer the degree of Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management. Congratulations. Madam Chancellor, it is my privilege to present these students as candidates for the Collegiate Honors of Graduation. I attest that they have successfully completed the required courses of study, and I ask that they be admitted to the master's degree. Mount St. Vincent University confers the degree of Master of Education on Maria Alati. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Master of Education with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Maria. Dale Armstrong. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Dale. Denise O'Coin. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Denise. Nikki Azami. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Nikki. Lisa Baggs. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Lisa. Teresa Barameo Bryce. Bruce, excuse me. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. John Boutlier. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, John. Diane Brennick. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. Alice Bridgman. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Alice. Lynn Bristol. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Lynn. And the traveler, Mary Broderick. <laughs> I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Mary. Job well done. Kathleen Manuel Brown. <laughs> I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. Carolyn Bursey. I confer the degree of Master of Education. 
Congratulations, Carol. Luisa Busato. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Luisa. Velma Casey. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Velma. Kim Campbell. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Kim. Suzanne Carlin. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Suzanne. Wendy Cook. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Wendy. Suzanne Cookson. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Suzanne. Sherry Cunningham. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Sherry. Marisa D'Alessandro. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Marisa. Joanne Danko Dume. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Joanne. Deborah Davis Maybe. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Deborah. Deborah Earl. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Deborah. Mary Edwards. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Mary. Linda Feast. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Linda. Anna Felici Gagliardi. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Anna. Edward Filipposi. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Edward. Elizabeth Foran. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Blaine Galloway. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Blaine. Teresa Glasgow. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Teresa. Shauna Gleason. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Shauna. Deborah Grandy. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Deborah. Daphne Harnum. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Daphne. Elizabeth Hemian. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Janet Holden. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Janet. Carolyn Hutchings. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Carolyn. Laura Kennedy. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. Michael James Kennedy. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Michael. Carl Kierick. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Carl. William Kohlenbrander. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, William. Irena Kobabich Putko. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Irena. Margaret Claire Lachlan. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Margaret. Allison Lieberman. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Allison. Shane Ling. 
I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. James Logan. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. Victoria Longo. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Victoria. Jane Lowe. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Jane. Karen MacDonald. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Karen. Stephen MacDonald. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Stephen. Deborah MacPhail. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Deborah. Susan McBride Wenzel. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Susan. Kelly McCarthy. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Kelly. Michelle McCarthy. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Michelle. Patricia, Patricia Mercer. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Patricia. Margaret Merrigan. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Margaret. Janice Murray. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Janice. Sharon Murden. I confer the degree of, Bat of Master of Education. Congratulations. James Neary. I confer the degree of Ma Master of Education. Congratulations, James. Shelley Tilly Reddy. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Shelley. Mona Rose. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Mona. <laughs> Page is turning. Deborah Ryan. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Deborah. Jacqueline Ryan. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Jacqueline. Sharon Shearer. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Sharon. Sadie McRae Smith. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Sadie. Danielle Maureen Spratt. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Danielle. Jean Smith Squibb. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Jean. Monique Saint-Amand. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Monique. Kathleen McNeil Stone. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Kathleen. Cheryl Street. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Cheryl. Dorothy Tennant. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Dorothy. Sharon Totaferno. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Sharon. Shelley Unsworth. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Shelley. Rhonda Wakeley Fortin. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations, Rhonda. James Warburton. I confer the degree of Master of Education. Congratulations. Sandra Warren. I confer the degree of Master of Education. 
Congratulations, Senator. Madam Chancellor, the degree of Master of Human Ecology on Tatiana Bates. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Master of Human Ecology with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Tatiana. Madam Chancellor, the degree of Master of Arts in Education on Nancy Christie. Nancy would like to dedicate her degree to the inner city youth of Toronto and the Swampy Cree and Moose Factory, James Bay. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts in Education with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Nancy. Dale Reeves. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Congratulations, Dale. And Janet Francis. Now everyone is starting to dedicate. So she'd like to dedicate to this to Joel, her son. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Congratulations. Catherine McLean. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Anne Murray. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Congratulations, Anne. Kathy Marie Oakley. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Congratulations. Anne Marie Starrick Slack. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Congratulations, Anne Marie. Jeannie Sroka. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in Education. Congratulations, Jeannie. Madam Chancellor, the degree of Master of Arts in School Psychology on Jody Harpel. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts in School Psychology with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations, Jody. Merrill Nash. I confer the degree of Master of Arts in School Psychology. Congratulations, Mary. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, the degree of Master of Arts in Women's Studies offered jointly by Mount St. Vincent University, Dalhousie University, and St. Mary's University on Lisa Walters. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you to the degree of Master of Arts in Women's Studies, offered jointly by Mount St. Vincent University, Dalhousie University, and St. Mary's University, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Now, I think some of us need a seventh inning stretch. It's, it's World Series time, so let's all get up. And if you turn to page 19. Rosemary, the upset. The upset. Sorry. <laughs>
us a baby it moves. Viva la academia, viva professores, viva mam blagamia, viva professores, viva mam bram boldly. Viva membra que liban semper sint in flore, semper sint in flore. Please be, please be seated. And Madam Chancellor has reminded me that I forgot about all of those people who are not here. And lest they not get their degrees, we must award them in absentia. So Madam Chancellor, I ask that you confer the appropriate degrees and certificates on all those presented to the University Senate. I confer degrees in absentia on those persons so designated by the Dean. It is now my privilege to present to our academic vice president, Dr. Judith Woodsworth, those individuals who are worthy of Senate Medals of Distinction. These engraved pewter medals awarded by the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University are given in recognition of superior academic achievement to each student who graduates with distinction and with highest aggregate in undergraduate diploma and degree pro programs. The master's medals are awarded upon a recommendation of each department. For the Bachelor of Science, Susan Duffy. <laughs> Susan, who is from Halifax, graduated with a major in chemistry. A common reaction from Susan's professor is, what a pleasure she was to teach, what a lovely person she is, and how balanced she is. She worked as Dr. Bob McDonald's research assistant in physical organic chemistry. Susan is obviously bright and conscientious, which is obvious from her academic record, but she is also a very keen soccer player. Susan is now enrolled in kinesiology at Dalhousie and is thinking about pursuing medicine. Congratulations, Susan. <laughs> Bachelor of Business Administration, Tara Ware. Tara Ware came to the Mount from Sackville High School where she graduated with high honors. She has maintained that high academic standing throughout her four years with us and frequently achieved A and A plus grades. She has excelled in the co-op program. Her work terms have been varied, but all involved accounting. She worked at the Colchester Y MCA as an administrative assistant bookkeeper, at Hunter and Belgrave Chartered Accountants as an accounting assistant, and at the Department of Health as an auditor consultant. Her work term reports were always outstanding. One of her employees commented, that Tara Ware was a dedicated, sincere, and pleasant individual with high moral characteristics. Her work has been viewed as excellent by all of her employers. Tara is currently pursuing a career in accounting and is employed with Lyle Tilly Davidson Chartered Accountants as a CA student. Congratulations, Tara. The Bachelor of Tourism and Hospitality Management on Jonathan Crandall. Jonathan comes from Salisbury, New Brunswick. When he first arrived on campus, Jonathan appeared to be a very shy person. However, according to my sources, he blew his cover during the student retreat in January of his first year when he demonstrated that he is a natural stand-up comedian. On the more serious side, Jonathan not only excelled in class, but also in his co-op placements. He received rave re reviews from his employer at the prestigious Cleveland House in the Muskogas. His attention to detail, excellent peer relations, 
and his positive attitude led to his being asked to return for a second placement. This may have something to do with his habit of asking for more work, even at the end of a busy shift. He is thorough, thoughtful, and it is appreciated for his leadership abilities. We all wish Jonathan well and what, what is sure to be a dynamic career. Congratulations, Jonathan. <laughs> Kathy Oakley, MED, Educational Psychology. Kathy completed her BSc from Dalhousie University in 1974 with a major in mathematics and her BED in 1987 from St. Mary's University. So she's made the circuit now. She came to our program in educational psychology with work experience in business and government and educational experiences ranging from teaching mathematics in junior and senior high to an upgrading instructor in a vocational rehab program for adults on social assistance. She was described as the best instructor we have ever had in our 13 years of operation. Her gift as an educator were also reflected in her thesis entitled Sentence to School, an inquiry into perceptions surrounding court mandated attendance. She interviewed 23 persons, youth justice professionals, youth service providers, school personnel, young offenders, and parents of young offenders impacted by court mandated school attendance transcribed thousands of pages of audio tape conversation, generated themes, and analyzed them with competence. The quality of this study reflects the trust and rapport that Kathy established with participants in her unwavering dedication to this project. Her thesis advisor reports that it was a privilege to work with Kathy, and, he, and to quote, it was an experience that sustains one's commitment to scholarship and education, end quote. In all her professional endeavors, Kathy has exhibited intelligence, perceptiveness, devotion, the capacity for critical reflection, sensitivity, and care. Congratulations, Kathy. <laughs> Suzanne Cookson, MED Elementary Education. The Senate Medal for the MED Program in Elementary Education is awarded to Suzanne Cookson, an award winner during her BED program at the Mount. Suzanne distinguished herself as a risk taker and an independent learning. Prior to completing her BED program, she had two years in the Gambia and West Africa, developing her own curriculum and materials. Since completing the BED program, she has been teaching at the American Community School in Beirut, Lebanon, and working on her MED in elementary education at the Mount focusing on mathematics, curriculum development, and multicultural approaches to children's literature. Her international experiences have enhanced her contribution to our classes and enriched the experience of her fellow students. Congratulations, Suzanne. <laughs> the MED in Literacy Education on Luisa Busato. Louisa has been with the York Catholic School Board in Ontario since 1988. She was an educational leader at St. Michael's Academy, an arts-based school, and is currently a program consultant for the board, offering in-service programs and working on site with teachers on assessment practices, teacher research, writing, providing a balanced curriculum and integrating the arts into education. As member of the North York External Program, Louisa distinguished herself by her enthusiasm, her creative and expansive intellect, her relentless pursuit of her research questions, and her curiosity, her dedication to her own learning and that of her students and colleagues. A talented and generous teacher, students and, student and mother, Louisa has a strong political commitment to arts-based education and its possibility for bridging cultures and difference. Congratulations, Louisa. Senate medals are also awarded on these students who are not attending. Trina Roach, Bachelor of Arts, Mark Sitter, Bachelor of Public Relations, 
Mark would have loved to have been here, but he is now working with one of the newer legislatures in South Africa as, um, as a PR con a consultant, maybe, I don't know what the exact title is. Barbara Flowers, Master of Ed, Adult Education. Deborah Turner, Master of Education Curriculum Studies. Uh, Rutka Edgar Granstein, Master of Arts in Educational Foundations. And Janice Chisholm, Master of Arts in School Psychology. Congratulations to them as well. <laughs> Valedictorian Prize. This provides all valedictorians with a lasting memento of their achievement and contribution to the graduating class. To be chosen valedictorian, the student must have maintained a strong academic record, must have been actively involved in a number of extracurricular activities either on campus or in the community, must have been nominated as a fitting spokesperson for the graduating class by their peers or their faculty. I am pleased to award the valedictorian valedictorian prize to Jeffrey O'Connell, Bachelor of Public Relations. And when I read this, you can see that he does get up at six. <laughs> Jeffrey. Jeffrey came to the Mount with an undergraduate degree from Dalhousie. He has been an exemplary Dean's List student whose scholastic and professional achievement during his time here have been outstanding. Jeff's cooperative education placements were with Public Works Canada here in Halifax, Nova Gas in Calgary, and with Industry Canada's SchoolNet program in Ottawa. His co-op employers found him to be an unusually talented and dedicated worker. He received the McNichol Scrimger Scholarship, Mount Merrick Scholarships, and the 1997-98 Federal Government Learning Award for his first co-op work term. Jeff was an active member of the PR Society. He is also a competitive triathlete who qualified for the 1997 World Championships and ranked first in Nova Scotia in the male 20 to 29 age group. He was a race volunteer for the Run Nova Scotia Youth Development Series, the on-camera media representative for the Nova Scotia Red Cross Society, a newsletter contributor for Triathlon Canada, a member of the executive board of Triathlon Nova Scotia, and a seminar coordinator with the Delplex Pool. He has also hosted a national television program on the CTV network. Certainly a multi-talented person. Jeff is now employed with Knowledge House here in Halifax. Congratulations, Jeff. <laughs> Kappa Gamma Pi. Members in Kappa Gamma Pi Honor Society of Catholic Universities for Women is awarded to graduates who, in addition to high scholastic standing and a good record in extracurricular activities, give promise of academic leadership in the future. The undergraduate medal goes to Jennifer Parker, Bachelor of Public Relations. Jennifer, who is from Halifax, graduated with her, as I just said, her PR degree today and also with a certificate in business. Jennifer was co-president of the PR Society, was a frequent contributor to the Pricaro, the student newspaper. She is described by her peers as caring, giving, energetic, and enthusiastic. These characteristics not only served her well within the classroom, but also in her co-op placements which were with the Department of Natural Defense in Ottawa, with Industry Canada here in Halifax, and with the University of Prince Edward Island in Charlottetown. We know that Jennifer will do well. Congratulations. <laughs> and the graduate uh, medal goes to Louise LeBlanc School Psychology in Absentia. Louise is a school psychologist in Montreal. The President's Prize. This special award donated by the university president is awarded to a member of the graduating class whose energy, generosity, and commitment have enriched the university during 
their time here as students and who now show promise in commitment as an alumna. The President Prize goes to Wendy Cook, Educational Foundations. Wendy, a native of St. John's, Newfoundland, graduates to get today with her master's in education. She holds an undergraduate degree from Mount Allison and a Bachelor of Education from Memorial University of Newfoundland, a Dean's List student at both. Wendy currently teaches grade seven French immersion at Oxford School in Halifax. She also coaches volleyball. Both Wendy and her professors note that there has been a big change in Wendy since beginning her graduate studies. When she began her studies last fall, and I quote her, I am not afraid to admit that there was many a day I would leave the parking lot wondering the validity of postmodernism. <laughs> I was even more concerned how I would ever be able to incorporate it into the daily routines of my prepubescent students, end quote. She says that her courses here have given her the confidence of believing that she can make a difference. But she does admit that in addition to her recently acquired knowledge, she always remembers what her father repeated often to her. It means so much to her that she has written it on her chalkboard in her grade seven classroom. In his old Anglican boys school in St. John's, there was a sign over the entrance that read, there is no substitute for common sense. Wendy says that coupled with what she has learned at the Mount, she tries to educate our youth to the best of her ability, also using common sense. Congratulations, Wendy. Madam Chancellor, Madam Vice-Chancellor and President, your honors, members of the Board of Governors, Governors, members of the University Senate, distinguished guests of convocation, faculty, graduates, family and friends. It is an honor to present Dr. Dorothy E. Smith for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. Dr. Smith, in her most recent book, has said, quote, I am unreservedly committed to securing for women the resources institutionalized in the academy that create knowledge, build and transmit intellectual tradition, house and foster debate, and sustain continuities across generations. The Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, along with its various communities, in recognizing Dr. Smith this afternoon, suggests that she has done just that. Distinguished academic, renowned scholar, outstanding teacher, dedicated activist, longtime feminist, mother and grandmother, enthusiastic birder and photographer, Dorothy Smith has made a significant contribution to the lives of those in and outside of the academy, particularly to the lives of women. Presently, professor in the Department of Sociology and Equity Studies and head of the Center for Women's Studies in Education at the Ontario Institute for Studies in Education at the University of Toronto, Dr. Smith received her BSc in Sociology from the London School of Economics. She received her PhD in Sociology from the University of California at Berkeley. She is the author of four scholarly books, The Everyday World is Problematic, Texts, Facts, and Femininity, A Feminist Sociology of Knowledge, The Conceptual Practices of Power, and her most recent book published in 1999, Writing the Social, Critique, Theory, and Investigations. As well, Dr. Smith has authored over 100 refereed articles and book chapters. In addition, she has supervised and mentored more than 30 completed doctoral candidates 
who hold positions in the academy throughout the world, some of whom are located in our Halifax universities and on stage this afternoon, Dr. Ann Manicum. Distinguished, uh, she has re been recognized for her achievements. In 1999, she received the Career of Distinguished Scholarship Award. In 1993, the Jesse Bamard Award for Feminist Sociology from the American Sociological Association. And in 1990, the Outstanding Contribution Award from the Canadian Sociology and Anthropology Association. She has received honorary degrees from the University of British Columbia, St. Thomas University, and this past spring from Carleton University in Ottawa. Working from the position of the unsettled to the unsettling, and always interested in how a particular piece of the social is woven, the personal for Dr. Smith is always political. In the introduction of her 1999 book, she says, quote, the various papers incorporated in this volume have originated very differently but all of them have begun with some sensation of the disquiet, a political discomfort that directed attention to a problem that I could not at that stage make explicit. These studies, she says, have started with a feeling of uneasiness or a problem of some aspect of my working life as a participant in various discourses." Unquote. Working from the everyday is problematic. Dr. Smith says her thinking and her writing represent developing work in which, quote, I am learning as I go. It goes forth as a work of discovery among an increasing number of sociologists in which we find out how to write the social, learning from the course of inquiry, from each other, and from the discipline of teaching. Through her process of discovery and teaching, many of us, too, have discovered a great deal. We have learned of the depth of her intellectual curiosity, of her unwavering political commitment to the lives of women and men, and we have learned of her uh, interest and love in teaching. In addition, many of us feel we have learned good sociological theory from Dr. Smith connected to the actual practices of individuals in the place in which they find themselves. As the most widely recognized feminist theorist in sociology today, Dorothy E. Smith's influence permeates a wide range of spaces in the sociological enterprise, as well as the everyday lives of women and men. In recognition of her accomplishments, I asked you, Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, to confer upon Dr. Dorothy E. Smith the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Dorothy E. Smith, to the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations to her. Madam Chancellor, Madam President, your honors, honorary degree recipients, distinguished guests, faculty, graduates, parents, family members, and friends. Hope I got everybody. It is a great honor to present Ann Derrick for the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, Honoris Causa. It is also a challenge. I have but 200 plus words. How to capture Ann Derrick's career that has been characterized by passion, precision and focus, all enlisted in the service of human rights. 
She has made outstanding contributions to the social and political landscape of criminal and constitutional law, and her achievements have established her as a serious presence in the field of feminist law and human rights. No one who lives in this space does so without a special brand of tenacity. Anne Derrick graduated with a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology, awarded jointly by the Mount and Dalhousie in 1977. She received her Bachelor of Laws from Dalhousie Law School in 1980 and was called to the Nova Scotia Bar in 1981. She was then a sole practitioner in Halifax for three years. In 1984, she became a partner at Buchan, Derrick and Ring of Halifax, now known as Beaton, Derrick and Ring. Perhaps more important than where she was working was what she was working on. Her practice has been configured by her tireless promotion and defense of civil liberties. She has served on a number of high-profile commissions of inquiry with two appointments under the Nova Scotia Human Rights Act. In recognition of her dedication to the people of Nova Scotia, she has received numerous awards. These are only a few. The annual award for commitment to equity from the Canadian Bar Association, Ontario Feminist Legal Theory Section, the Dalhousie Law School Alumni Award for Unselfish Public Service, and the Rebels with the Cause Award from the Elizabeth Fry Society. Anne Derrick is an impressive counsel in every sense of the word, both in and out of the spotlight. In recognition of her commitment to women, to gender equality, and to equity, I ask you, Madam Chancellor, in the name of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, to confer upon Anne Derrick the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa. On behalf of the Senate of Mount St. Vincent University, I admit you, Anne S. Derrick, to the degree of Doctor of Humane Letters, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Congratulations. Thank you very much. I would like to open my remarks this afternoon by acknowledging Sister Mary Louise Brink, Chancellor, Dr. Sheila Brown, members of the Board of Governors and Faculty, Dr. Dorothy Smith, graduates, honored guests, and my own family and friends who are here today. You know who you are. I particularly would like to acknowledge the presence today of my three daughters, Elspeth, Katrina, and Freya and Archie, my partner, who have provided me with so much loving support throughout our years together. I want to reassure the girls that you will not have to call me doctor, at least not at home. <laughs> and I won't be doing any surgical procedures on the kitchen table, girls. It's not that kind of doctor. You will all be relieved to know that the Mount, in its eminently sensible and efficient way, has directed that the convocation address to the graduates is to last a maximum of 15 minutes. And 15 minutes is quite long enough for all of us. I have still never quelled my instinctive anxiety about public speaking. In fact, I considered abandoning the idea of law school once I learned there was a public speaking requirement in the second year curriculum. After years of experience, I can at least now feel my legs below my knees. I am, however, mindful in giving this address of the words of Justice Robert Howard Jackson who in 1954 said, and I quote, 
I used to say that as Solicitor General, I made three arguments of every case. First came the one that I planned, as I thought, logical, coherent, complete. Second was the one actually presented, interrupted, incoherent, disjointed, disappointing. The third was the utterly devastating argument that I thought of after going to bed that night. <laughs> I will leave you to judge. It is my recollection of convocation, including the one I was a decree recipient at in this very auditorium, that the overwhelming emotion is one of relief. The beauty of receiving an honorary degree, so I have discovered, is that one gets to feel honored. And in my case, I feel tremendously honored that the Mount would pay me such a compliment as to confer this distinction on me. I'm going to ask Dr. Brown to pinch me on the way out of the auditorium, just so I know this is real. Today's ceremony has a special significance for me, as it is 30 years ago this fall that I started in grade nine as a student at Mount St. Vincent Academy, which was run by the Sisters of Charity and housed in the Mother House. The Academy closed in 1972 after 99 years of educating girls. As far as I know, my presence at the school was not influential in the decision to close it. <laughs> That graduation was especially emotional, as it was not only a passage for us, the graduating classes, but also for an entire institution. By choosing to go on to university at the Mount, I continued the singular experience of being in a predominantly female environment at an institution that had and has as its primary mission the education of women. The significance of this experience has become more apparent to me as my life has unfolded. I want to take this opportunity, therefore, to thank my parents, my mother is here in the audience today, for making the decision to send me to the Mount. The reservations I had about that decision at 13 have since matured into a realization that my years at the Mount conferred exceptional benefits upon me, as I hope they have on you. I want to credit the Mount for playing a significant role in my decision to become a lawyer. In 1976, as I finished my last term as president of the Students' Union, we encountered a problem that necessitated advice from a lawyer. I went to meet the lawyer, having never had such an experience before. I had no idea what lawyers did. I had no appreciation of the role of lawyers in society. What I'm about to relate is seared into my memory. I sat waiting for the appointment in the reception area of the lawyer's office. I was struck by the huge, probably rented, potted plants. <laughs> I had never seen such huge indoor plants before. They spoke to me of power and influence. It dawned on me that lawyers had power, power that could be harnessed to help those who were disadvantaged. I had never thought of this connection before between big plants and the power of lawyers, <laughs> having had no context for doing so. Since that revelation, I have never looked back. It hardly amounts to the visions Joan of Arc had of St. Michael, but it is as close to a divine revelation as I'm ever likely to get. Inspiration is everywhere. You just have to notice it. I had the opportunity to notice the inspirational potted plants because of the mount. It is most unlikely that I would have been president of the student union at a bigger, more impersonal, male-dominated institution. I want to thank the mount for the opportunities I received here as a student, at school and then at university, for the education I secured, and now for conferring upon me this honorary degree. It is for me a very great honor, and I am humbled by it. Your dreams, not necessarily inspired by potted plants, have brought you here today after much hard work and sacrifice by you and your families, however they are defined. I understand that some of you have managed jobs and families while getting your degrees. Some of you have earned them through distance, distance education. Some of you have come to the Mount as older students. All of you enriching the university community with your diversity. I am so impressed to see the breadth of the qualifications which you have achieved as newly minted graduates and as graduates who have had or have other careers. You are to be warmly congratulated for all you have accomplished, some of you against greater odds than others. You have earned the right to be proud of yourselves in what today's achievement indicates about your diligence 
perseverance and skill. You are, each of you, a powerful force. As a university graduate, you have been privileged with a degree, something so many people in our society still do not have. And the responsibilities that accompany you are onerous. I will come back to this point shortly. I presume you came to university with dreams, dreams of what you wanted to do with your life and plans of how you would use your education to make those dreams come true. I hope you still have your aspirations, even if they have undergone a metamorphosis during your time here. I hope you are, have been able to nurture them through the demands that have been placed on you and have retained the essential integrity of them throughout the many challenges you have faced to get here today. I went to university with a dream, a plan. I wanted to make a difference, to do something to advance the interests of those who did not have my advantages. Up to the point of the potted plant epiphany, I had not understood as clearly how that could be done. I went to law school, a feminist, to do exactly what I have done, work on behalf of those who are oppressed and disenfranchised. I never let go of my plan of what I intended to do. I have been extremely fortunate not only to have aspirations, but also opportunities. Those opportunities have come in many forms. They have included the cases I have done and am doing. These cases have emerged from the lives and struggles of my clients, many of whom are uncommonly brave, resilient, and often greatly wronged. They have given me so much to work with and work for. Donald Marshall Jr., who struggled to achieve justice after his wrongful conviction, has helped to forge him into the important leader amongst the Mi'kmaq that he is today. Sex trade workers who resisted government efforts to further criminalize them for being poor. Institutional abuse survivors who are true survivors in every sense of that word, notwithstanding all the hardships and deprivations they have endured since childhood and in many cases continue to endure. The women who made up the Pandora Women's Newspaper Collective, who successfully fought for the right in the face of a human rights complaint by a man to create and maintain a women's only space for women's voices. A case I would like to add that included women whose expert evidence at the Human Rights Board of Inquiry referred to the work of Dr. Dorothy Smith. Women prisoners whose treatment at the hands of the Correctional Service of Canada became a national scandal and precipitated a royal commission of inquiry. Dr. Morgenthaler, whose experiences as a Jew in Nazi-occupied Poland and as a doctor in working-class Montreal instilled in him a moral imperative to advance the cause of women's reproductive choice. These are some of the clients whom I have been privileged to represent. It has also been my good fortune to work with and for national women's organizations whose commitment is to the advancement of women's equality and other more anonymous clients whose courage and humanity have been gifts to me all the same. I have received so much from these experiences that has hardened my politics and touched my heart. The convocation ceremonies today caused me to think about the first woman law graduate in Nova Scotia whose name was Frances Lillian Fish. She graduated in 1918 and soon after her graduation was admitted to the Nova Scotia Bar, the first woman to do so. Her admission to the Bar was only able to occur after the Nova Scotia legislature passed a statutory amendment that declared that women, who at that time were not yet legal persons, were eligible for admission. She later said, I had a real hard time when I started out. There was a little prejudice. Prejudice is still very much a feature of life in Canada for people who have been historically disadvantaged. It is a reality for women, Aboriginal people, visible minorities, gays and lesbians, people with disabilities, and the poor. The most systemically disadvantaged people in our society are also the most vulnerable. We live in a country where sexism, misogyny, racism, homophobia, heterosexism, and other forms of ignorance and hatred operate to deny full citizenship for all members of our communities. Our Charter of Rights and Human Rights Codes fix the democratic norms that serve as the organizing principles for our society. They are intended to operate as broad and purposive 
instruments to effect positive change and advance the rights of those who are subject to discrimination. We have constitutional protections, securing fundamental justice, security of the person and equality rights, amongst other rights. We have obligations under international human and civil rights treaties. We have obligations to First Nations, people under treaties signed between their forebearers and the Crown. We have decisions of the Supreme Court of Canada that breathe life into the principles that ground these obligations. Notwithstanding these obligations, constitutional and human rights norms and democratic principles, there are many people in Canadian society who articulate viewpoints that suggest people claiming their rights are seeking to claim special rights. This discourse, sometimes more appropriately described as invective, is aimed at women, Aboriginal people, gays and lesbians, visible minorities, and others who have been historically disadvantaged and oppressed. You have all heard it. Perhaps you have been tempted to share these per perspectives. Perhaps you have resisted and denounced them. They envelop us as we careen through the end of this millennium and into a chaotic and uncertain future. They are arguments that would deny Aboriginal people their treaty rights to hunt, fish, and harvest resources for commercial purposes, would deny women the right to jobs for which men are hired, would deny women the right to protections necessary to advance the cause for their equality, would deny gays and lesbians the rights accorded to heterosexuals, adoption rights, same-sex benefits, the right to exist as legally recognized families. But the arguments about special rights are wrong. The cause of human rights and justice and equality is not the cause of preferring one group over another. It is the cause of transforming the world, making a place in it for everyone, overcoming the bigotry and hatred that divides people everywhere. Those of us who have received the advantages of a university education have the greatest opportunity to make a difference in this discourse about rights and responsibilities in our workplaces, in our families, and in our communities. We also cannot let opportunities to affect positive change pass. If you think a single person cannot make much of a difference, think of Amnesty International's letter-writing campaign conducted at kitchen tables. Think of Nelson Mandela, who after 27 years in prison became president of South Africa. Look at the example of Doctors Without Borders who were just awarded the Nobel Peace Prize for their humanitarian work. We must remember that it is not just one letter from an amnesty supporter that frees a prisoner. It is all the letters together the critical mass of letters. It is our shared responsibility to be a critical mass of concerned, compassionate, educated citizens committed to our dreams for a better world. I want to include at this point, as it is expressive of part of my message today, an excerpt from a poem by Mary Oliver, an American writer who in 1983 won the Pulitzer Prize for poetry. When it's over, I don't want to wonder if I have made of my life something particular and real. I don't want to find myself sighing and frightened. I don't want to end up simply having visited this world. We are not visitors, we live here. We have shared responsibilities to each other. Those of us who have privilege of race, of literacy and education, of gender, of affluence, of health, of community and connection, have a profound obligation to contribute to change for those who are excluded. There are opportunities waiting for you outside the doors of this auditorium to use the gifts you have been given to make that contribution or augment the contribution you are already making. And if the potted plant speaks to you, it is my advice that you should listen. It is time I concluded my remarks, and I want to do so by reflecting on the fact that I am standing here addressing you as an honorary degree recipient. I did not get here alone. You all know that fact very well from your own experiences of who helped you along the way to today's celebration of achievements. For my part, I would like to recognize and honor my father, John Derrick, and my partner, Archie Kaiser. My father is not here today, although he had hoped to come because of ill health. I want to take this opportunity to thank him for lighting the fuse of my passion for justice. I thank him for not waiting to stir me up, for not holding back his critical views of the world, for instilling in me a sense as long ago as I can remember 
of what is not right with the world and the determination to do something about it. I also want to say a special thank you to you, Archie, for everything you are, smart, principled, compassionate, funny, and everything you have done for me, from caring about me to filling my, care with, my car with gas at midnight before a road trip to some penitentiary or courthouse somewhere, to making me supper every night, to bringing it to the office to eat at the desk when I can't get home, to getting me books from the law library after the children are asleep, often with yellow stickies to mark the crucial passages, to writing me unsolicited notes full of ideas and suggestions for cases, to calming down agitated clients who call the house looking for me, to folding my laundry, to looking after our precious girls. He didn't breastfeed them, mind you, but he wanted to. <laughs> Thank you, Archie, for everything. And to the graduates, I would like to express my appreciation for being able to share this afternoon with you and your families. It has been an honor to be part of your ceremony and celebration. This has been a very special occasion for me, and I thank everyone in the Mount community for making me part of it. Thank you. Thanks, Anne. That's a tough act to follow, but I'll try. Um, good afternoon. Um, it's wonderful, actually, to see you all up there. I know how much your presence means to at least one of the graduates here today, and I'd like to thank everyone for coming, especially my own family. Um, my name is Jennifer Parker, and I have been given the honor today of congratulating Mount St. Vincent's newest honorary degree recipients, Dr. Anne Derrick and Dr. Dorothy Smith. At this point, we are all well aware of the contributions they have both made to their respective professions and to the larger communities that they have touched, particularly the women's community. On behalf of the graduating class present today, I'd like to commend you both for your dedicated efforts and thank you for joining us as we celebrate a milestone in our own lives. Today, you have both become alumni of Mount St. Vincent University. Along with the graduating class I represent, you will be ambassadors to this institution of higher learning. Dr. Derrick, your words today were carefully chosen and left a special, special message with each of us. On behalf of the convocating class of October 1999, I thank you for delivering such a thought-provoking and inspirational message. This day will be with us for a long time. It is already becoming a memory. Amidst the relief, sadness, awe, and celebration we will remember will be your extraordinary words. Congratulations and thank you to you both. As I sat and listened to Ann Derrick's words, I couldn't help but notice the huge potted plant or flowers <laughs> sitting on the stage. And for me, it symbolized the power and the passion that's present here among those who have achieved such wonders today. So congratulations to all those who received diplomas, degrees, certificates. Thank you especially to Ann and Dorothy and we thank also all those who came from near and far to be present to share in the joy and the celebration of this day. At this time, I'd like to let you know that graduates and their families and guests are invited to a reception in the dining hall in Rosaria Center as soon as the convocation ceremonies are concluded. And I now declare this convocation closed.